and a little dog are all that remain of the life that Siori remembers, so she's desperate to protect them. Thanks to her new friend, she has a chance to stay close to both of them while she tries to piece together what happened to her friends and family after her accident. Against his better judgment, Wu Jin somehow gets involved with a 30-year-old waif because the one thing that he's devoted to is that little dog, who wants nothing more than to stay by Siori's side. Episode 3, Elegant Ghost The crowd in Wu Jin's house has moved to the living room, where recent coma patient Seo reclutches Do Kegu the dog, and the maid apologizes for assuming that she was his relative. Seo Ri tries to explain that her family owns the house but Wu Jin informs her that his parents bought it 11 years ago and introduces Chan as his nephew. Seo Ri points to Pa Rain, who was her dog, but Wu Jin tells her that he was abandoned and taken in by his family. Seo Ri asks about her uncle but Chan volunteers that he and Wu Jin, who he calls Mr. Gong, were out of the country when the house was purchased. Chan wonders why Seo Ri doesn't contact her uncle directly but Seo Ri stammers that they lost touch. Chan kindly offers to call his grandfather but after they speak, he awkwardly explains that the previous owner left everything behind in a hurry, including Deo Kegu. Chan gently suggests that Seo Ri might have better luck with the police. Wu Jin stands to ask Seo Ri to leave and reaches for Deo Kegu, but the dog turns its head away and whimpers. Wu Jin calls his dog's name but Chan's friend Deo Kesu answers instead, and Chan has to explain that their names are practically identical. Her eyes brimming, Seo Ri apologizes to Wu Jin for the trouble and tells the dog that she can't take care of him. She hands over Deo Kegu while he whimpers sadly. Seo Ri runs into the lobby of a building to look for her uncle's business but a security guard informs her that he's never heard of his trading firm. Seo Ri exits the building in confusion until she remembers Chan's suggestion about the police and runs off. At the police station, Seo Ri rattles off the names of her aunt and uncle and asks the officers to find them and then adds her friends Sumi and Hyung Tae. An officer kindly asks for her ID, but Seo Ri explains that she doesn't have any because she's only 17. When Seo Ri scolds herself for the mistake, another officer whispers that she must have mental problems. The officer explains that unless she wants information about her immediate family, they can't help her. Seo Ri wanders down a street as the officer's parting words are heard, this neighborhood was redeveloped a long time ago. Whoever used to live there probably moved, Seo Ri looks around and wonders where her friends and family could be until she's frozen by the sight of her reflection in a store window. Back of the house, Chan and his friends are about to devour four cakes when Wu Jin returns with food for Deo Kegu. His friends stand up and Chan realizes that they were never properly introduced. He introduces his uncle, Mr. Gong, who guesses that the guests are Chan's friend and coach. Deo Su laughs, that's right. I'm Chan's coach, and then whines. Of course I'm not his coach, Chan explains that they're all the same age and introduces Han Deo Su and Dong Hei Bum, whose family became wealthy through redevelopment. Wu Jin turns his attention to Deo Kegu's untouched dinner while Chan's friends ask if he digs for herbs in the mountains. Chan jumps to his uncle's defense and explains that he's been on vacation. Deo Su and Hei Bum think that not caring how you look is a great way to live, but to worry Chan quietly mutters, I wish Mr. Gong didn't live like that. A passing pack of motorcycles forces Seo Ri onto a sidewalk and into a middle-aged drunk. She runs away, only to end up on a street with a man who she's convinced has a knife. Terrified, Seo Ri screams and runs away when he pulls out a foil-wrapped meat stick from his jacket. Wu Jin sits in his bedroom, the walls covered with all kinds of sketches, including one of Deo Kegu. He hears howling and finds Deo Kegu in the living room, staring out the window. Chan joins him and the two men wonder what's behind Deo Kegu's unusual behavior. The maid has now joined them and speaks up, dogs don't bark for no reason. She begins to howl herself and then expertly explains that howling is a signal to family members to come home. Impressed Chan applauds and tells Wu Jin, amazing. She sounds like the internet, Wu Jin protests, but his family is already here, only to have Chang wonder, is he looking for that lady? Dok Gu's original owner, Wu Jin sends everyone to bed and stays behind to calm Dok Gu. Seo Ri has taken refuge inside a playground slide and whimpers that she's scared. 
she remembers a conversation in the car with her mother when she confessed that she wasn't sure if she was ready for serious study of the violin. Siori was relieved when her mother suggested that she needn't feel pressured to attend an arts middle school. Her mother's gentle laugh from the past is drowned out by Siori's sobs in the present. The 17-year-old version of Siori appears and serves as a reminder of just how young she feels. The maid is busy mopping when Wu Jin walks in, clean-shaven and sporting a fresh haircut. Thinking H.E.A. an intruder, she smoothly points the mop at his head and asks, Who are you? She recognizes him once he speaks and comments, I can't believe how much hair changes a person, while the maid recites more quotes, this time about first impressions, Wu Jin checks on D.O. Kegu, who still hasn't eaten. He schedules an appointment with a vet but before he leaves, the maid informs him of her plan to clean the garden. When she asks for the key to the shed, he insists that she's to leave it alone. The vet examines D.O. Kegu and recommends that he stay for treatment. When Wu Jin leaves, he runs into a man who recognizes him. The man tells him that he's relieved to see him look so well and suggests that they meet but then wonders, is it better for